Hello everyone, welcome to my YouTube channel is Teams Tech. In today's tutorial, we are going to learn about functions. So basically what is function or method? We can also call it method. So in these four bullet points, we have described some of the characteristics of functions. So first point says it is a piece of reusable code. Definitely it is. Because we can use that particular function multiple times whenever we require that function, we can use it. Like it is a set of statements or we can say a block of statements there that are performing some task. Whenever we require to perform a specific task, we can call that function. All right. For second point says that it solves particular task. As I have mentioned earlier as well, for example, I'm taking an example. For example, we have a function sum. Definitely it is going to plus two numbers or three numbers or multiple numbers, right? So if we have a method, another method max, definitely it is going to find the maximum of two numbers or three numbers and so on. Like this. I mean, if we have a particular function, it is defined to do some particular task. All right. And third point says, like we can call function instead of writing code yourself. Like you can call function. Like when we don't require to write code on our own, some tasks are predefined and inbuilt for example we have a uh, that i have mentioned earlier we have a function sum in python that is performing summation we need not to create our own program we need not to create our own code to do sum right we already have a function name sum if we want to create uh, if we we have to uh, find out the maximum of two numbers or three numbers and so on in that case we have a function named max in case we want to find the mean or median of a particular list or or a series of numbers in that case even we have all we already have a function name mean or median for that we need not to write code for that because some functions are inbuilt functions if we are writing code on our own we are defining a new function a user defined function in that case we might be wasting our time why are we not using why we are not using inbuilt functions for example we have a function named type this type function is going to give you the type of a particular variable for example the variable is of float type it is going to return float in case the type of a variable a is int integer it is going to get it is going to result in int and similarly with the string and the bool right some functions are already defined we need not to write code for that right and these functions are used to solve a particular task and we can reuse those functions as many times we want i hope the introduction is clear so now we are going to move to some activities. We have a Jupyter notebook here. In this, I have this activity. Okay. I'm making it. Okay. Create variables where one and where two. Let's create where one is equals to it is given one two three four this is where one and where two is simply true true is a bool okay so now use print in combination with type to print out the type of where one okay let's do it print the type of variable where one okay done so now it is asking me use length to get the length of list where one we have to find the length of the list where one 
how we can do is print out length of wire 1 print length of wire 1 and now use int to convert var2 to, to an integer store the output as out2 out2 and use int to convert var2 to, to an integer okay how we can convert var2 to, to an integer okay let's do it Mm. int var2 and then print out2 let's run this see we have printed type of var1 this is list definitely it is a list we know this already then length of variable 1 var1 one list is Four, because there are four elements in the list yeah so we got the answer of this print statement and then convert var to an integer so int var2 var2 is true because this is a boolean value which has value 1 and when we printed out 2 it is resulting in 1 okay so moving to the next activity we have this activity Okay, I want it to be back in heading. Okay. Oh, sorry. It should be marked down. Hmm. No, it's fine. So, create list first and second. First, list is containing 11.25, 18.25. 0, 20.0, 0, second, ten point seven five, nine point five zero. We have created two lists, first and second. Now use plus to merge the contents of first and second list into a new list full okay so simple first plus second now sort full in descending order mm, and call sorted on full and specify the result reverse argument to be true save the sorted list as full sorted okay full sorted is a in this we have to store sorted what we need to sort we need to sort full list and reverse argument is to be true because we need to sort full this list in descending order if I'm not putting reverse true, it is going to sort in ascending order, but we want descending order. So we have to put here reverse is true. And we need to reverse this list full. Okay. So now print full sorted. Let's run this. Okay. So, 11.25, first and second list we have joined these two lists. So, our full list contains 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 elements. Definitely, it is containing 5 elements. Uh -uh. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And now, full sort full in descending order. Full sorted is sorting full list. Okay, so here it is dot. I'm running in this again. 
now yeah cool now i was wondering from where this zero came i just forgot i just missed using dot here and instead of dot i put comma my mistake so here this is full sorted list in descending order that's it we got the desired output okay so now i am moving to the next activity this activity so use upper method on place and store the result in place up okay use the syntax for calling methods that you learned in the previous video mm -hmm. print out place and place up did both change okay next thing is print out the number of o's on the variable place by calling count on place and passing the letter o as an input to the method we are talking about the variable place not the word place okay i'm using variable place in here i am typing something cool and place up is equals to place dot upper okay mm -hmm. okay now print out place and place up printing place and print place up let's see mm, yeah so now it is in upper case earlier it was first letter was capital others were small now all the capital letters are there for place one see this one this is place up so now print out the number of o's on the variable place by calling count okay place dot count and here how many o's are there okay let's see i'm assigning this to s and then print s now check how many hours o's are there see one two three four five definitely five o's are there so we got the answer five so simple we could also do like this like using print in here and then running it same thing no change all right so now in the next question we have write code to get index in list for example i want to have index in the list i am considering my list hmm okay var 1 i am considering this list var 1 1 2 3 4 elements are there so var 1 and i want to find the index of 4 in this case what i got to do is var 1 index sorry it's just index index of 2 print so yeah and what is the index of 3 2 and the index of 4 is 3 all right this we already know this we have checked in the list like var 1 that we have defined earlier okay now reversing a list how we can reverse a list okay do it like print 
var1 if i want to reverse var1 i'm using the method reverse none um in this case what we can do is better thing is already uh, like although this reverse method has modified the list although it is returning none but yes it has modified the list but what we prefer to do is like the start index of the list the stop index of the list and after it i am extending the slicing using minus 1 here so it is this minus 1 is going to reverse the list uh -uh -um. it has then uh, if i'm using s is equals to index of 4 of uh, let's do it with another list if i have a list like this one that contains elements like 67 56 45 and 34 and in case if i want to get the index of list one dot index in this case if i want the index of 45 it should return 2 yes it is returning in case if i want to find the index of 34 it should return 3 yes it is so now if i want to reverse list 1 in that case print list 1 now yes it has done list one this is this thing we have already done in the last video list two that if i am not having anything before the colon first colon in case it in that case it means it has it is containing the start index of the list and after the colon it is the end index of the list last index of the list and minus 1 is the extended slicing in this case we are we are reversing the list all right so this is the desired output all right i'm um, moving to the next activity create list areas create list areas in this list we have elements Okay, let's create it. Okay, print out the index of element to 20.0. In this case, doing areas dot index 20.0. Yep. And then call count on areas to find out how many times 9.50 appears in the list. okay print areas dot count 9.50 check this means index of 20.0 is 0 1 2 definitely it is 2 and area uh, and counting 9.50 so there is only one element 9.50 so this is returning one all right so this solves my activity so we have used index function here and count function here and in the next activity you can see use append twice to add the size of the pool house and the garage create list areas so this is the list i have to append twice to add pool house and garage size okay and garage size is 24.5 and then areas dot 
append 24.5 and areas dot append 15.45 now print areas okay reverse the orders now use the method reverse to reverse the order of the elements and areas okay okay areas dot if it is working let's see print areas let's see so we have area list 11.25 18.0 this thing okay now can you see here if i'm printing area in the first here it was containing one two three four five elements after using the append method twice now 24.5 and 15.45 these two elements are also appended in the existing list so now this is a sorted list sorry the reversed list now we have reversed the list the areas list is reversed now so this is all about today so thank you for listening and See you soon in the next tutorial. Till then, goodbye, take care and subscribe to my channel, Esteemstech. Alright, bye-bye.